What do you think about Western countries wanting to decouple from China and move these factories outside of China? If you start to move out like 50% or 30%, back to Europe, then you do the same from India, Vietnam, Thailand. We will break the back. Yeah, yeah. Europe don't have a chance. You have a big responsibility here, right? You have 300 workers that work in your factory. And it's a little bit funny because I'm Norwegian, so I, I went to China and opened the factory because uh, I believe in the Chinese dream. Can the world decouple and de-risk from China? It's something that many of our Western politicians are saying every day. And to answer that question, I've decided to come here to China itself. I'm in a city called Wuxi, visiting a factory called Kalito, and I want to understand more about the textile industry. Kalito is owned by a Norwegian and Chinese businessman that came together and started this company, and there are many European brands that are still choosing to manufacture in China. In today's video, we're going to be meeting with both of the owners and also learning a lot more about the textile industry and what manufacturing China is really like in 2023. We're in the showroom here at Kalito and I'm joined by Tommy, one of the co-owners of the factory here, originally from Norway, been doing business in China for over 16 years. And Tommy, I want to know a little bit more about the textile industry and really how China has evolved over the last you know, few years. I think that uh to understand the industry and how China is moving forward. Yeah. Uh, you, you need to understand that China today is not what it was 20 years ago. It even isn't what it was 10 years ago or five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's moving so fast forward within the environmental aspects, mm -hmm. uh, working condition, human rights aspects for the workers. It's so, so we are moving in a very, very positive direction. And it's Fantastic. both very fast. Yeah. Because yeah. Tommy, I know before when we always thought of China manufacturing, we're typically thinking of that China's producing a very large quantity. Oftentimes the quality is not there. But have you seen a shift in the industry and kind of what is what is China doing in 2023? When we started Calito in 2012, we, we saw a gap in the market. Yeah. Before, like in the old days, it was huge volumes, uh, easy production items. But uh, we saw a gap in the market where we can go in, uh, talk with the brands and find solution to lower the volume, right. uh, focusing on quality instead of uh, volumes. Right. Definitely it's a, it's a change and uh, it's, a, it's a also a need for the brands to always develop something which is better quality than before because that's also an aspect of, of uh, environmental friendly production. Yeah. Produce garments who last longer. You know, analyzing China for so many years, one of the things that I've always, you know, known about China is that before, we always thought China making a bunch of cheap things. You know, we yeah. think about back in the <laughs> 70s and 80s, you have a lot of plastic toys, a lot of plastics, yeah. but it's also been a fundamental shift from the government saying we want to be more forward thinking. Yeah. For example, you know, Apple is making their iPhones in China because this is where the most advanced tech is being made. And you need obviously very good precision. You need extremely advanced technologies to be able to make an iPhone. But we've seen that also in the textile industry because yeah. I've seen some of the brands here. I mean, we're talking very high-end luxury European brands. You know, they're not manufacturing in Europe. They're still manufacturing in China. Yeah. But a big reason for that is because of the quality and how that how the industry is growing. It's correct, as you said, that the, the local government here also put restriction on us as a manufacturer to making sure that we follow uh, the restriction for, for the environment also. You need to understand China. China yeah. is always developing. Right. It's going really, really, really fast within all the industries. You can just look at the EV industry. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Fantastic. So is, if it hadn't been for China, it will be hard to have so much EV uh, cars today. Well, Tommy, it's always good to see the finished product, but this is very similar to what I see every day when I go shopping because this looks like a department store here. <laughs> what I want to know is I want to know how it's made and I want to learn more about it. So why don't we go to the factory and why don't you and Andy show us and all the viewers the behind the scenes on what really the textile industry in China really looks like. Yeah, let's do it. Well, everyone, we've now made it to one of the two Kalito factories. I'm joined by Andy, the other co-owner of the Kalito brand. And we, this is really exciting for me, Andy, because yeah. I, I used to live in China for 10 years, oh. but I never have visited a factory in China. Oh, So, yeah. I, you know, it's always amazing. I want to see, you know, what's really going on behind the scenes. For me, uh, when I look at a t-shirt, yeah. I, I, I probably don't understand how, how difficult and how many steps 
it takes to actually just make something like a t-shirt or a polo like I'm wearing? Yeah, 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 I understand, I understand. Actually now we are at our sewing line. We can go and have a look, go to the sewing line. And have yeah, a let's look. have a look. My trip to Kalito is so important because not all factories in China are created equally. Let me give you an example. Last week, the Washington Post wrote an article entitled Xi'an, the fast fashion giant hits roadblocks. Xi'an is one of China's largest fashion companies and operates over 6,000 factories in China. While Xi'an is extremely popular in America, the company has received a heavy amount of criticism in Western media for using low quality materials and underpaying and overworking their employees. Upon entering the Kalito factory floor, my first impression was, wow, this is a well-organized production line that is the complete opposite of Xi'an. And this is exactly where the gap in the market for Kalito exists. Instead of focusing on quantity, Kalito prioritizes quality and is a one-stop shop for fashion companies. What that means is that Kalito manages the entire process of production, from sourcing the cotton, dyeing the fabrics different colors, and ensuring that every step of the production line is produced in-house. I was surprised to learn how complicated the process of making clothing is. Did you know that a simple t-shirt requires the use of eight different machines? Cotton arrives at the factory and is rolled out and laser cut into sheets. The sheets are then sent to this laser machine, which cuts out the exact patterns for every piece of the garment. The pieces are then sent to the factory floor, where each part of the garment is carefully assembled. This is a transfer printing machine that helps print on the label for a pair of ladies' underwear. Some of the machines are incredibly complex. This worker is assembling the zipper component of a jacket and using a high-end sewing machine that uses not one, but six spindles of thread with each stitch. And this is what I also noticed. The machines in these factories are also from China. Hikari is one of the most advanced sewing machine companies in the world and is based in Shanghai. The laser cutting machine I saw earlier, another Chinese brand called Yi Nung Tech. Andy and Tommy both told me one of their competitive advantages is that all the machines they use have factories in the local area. And if any machine breaks down or needs replacement, it can usually be done the same business day. This shows just how integrated the textile supply chain is in the local area. After assembling the garment, it's then sent to the quality control department, where workers inspect every inch of the garment and cut off any loose threads to make sure the clothing is perfect and meets the highest standard. Finally, the garments are sent to get ironed before they are packaged in boxes and shipped to the customer. As one can see, the factory at Kalito is very different. Tommy and Andy have created an incredible rapport with their factory workers and treat them like family. Tommy has been coming to China for over 16 years, and many of the workers are incredibly happy to be working for an international company that helps produce incredible products for customers around the world. So Tommy, that lady's facial expression really said a lot. I mean, <laughs> what a genuine smile, and it's, it's really awesome to see. But I think that's one of the things that really helps Kalito separate itself from other other, other brands out there. You have a big responsibility here, right? You have 300 workers that work in your factory. Yeah, totally. In our company, we are 300, and it's uh, it's not only 300 workers. Yeah. It's 300 families. Yeah. Uh, so we have a huge responsibility. Yeah. To making sure that we do the correct steps. Right. Yeah. So we're yeah. making the dream alive. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you're, so you're. All, I mean, you're doing the right steps for the for the production, but you're also giving these workers a good quality. You know, life, right? I mean, they have a good work-life balance. They're working hard. They're making good money, but they're providing for their families. Absolutely. And uh, Kalito, we 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 are not a, a cheap manufacturer. Right. We are more like a high-end level manufacturer. So we yeah. pay our workers a quite decent salary because nice. they have they are very skilled. That's right. And also, what we implemented when we started the the, the company, I heard that uh, when you go on Chinese holiday then you come back and then you get your bonus. Right. I said, Andy, we need to change that. Nice. So we implemented that uh, when they go for Chinese New Year holiday, yeah. they get their bonus nice. and they come back because they want to come back, not because of the bonus. They come back and work. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. That's a great insight. Tommy, tell me a little bit more about the workers because what I've noticed is you're, like you said, Kalito is about high-end manufacturing, high-end quality products. How easy is it to find people to work here? I mean, can anybody just come in here and work at Kalito? Uh, no, they, 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 they can't uh, because we, since we are a one-stop manufacturer, so yeah. we produce from, from underwear all the way up to heavy fleece. Uh, we do cross-country ski products. We right. do a lot of sports products. So 
care, we need skilled workers. Right. That means also that a customer can come to us and say, hey, we want to develop a new concept. For example, sport items. Right. We know how to do that. Right. Uh, and at the same time, we can do their fashion items. We believe this is the future. For, yeah. And we have had success so far. That's yeah. fantastic. Awesome. All right, we're continuing our tour of the factory. Tell me, tell me what are these labels up here on the wall? This is uh, the logo for some of our certifications. We want to show the customers that we we have this type of certifications. So this is the global organic textile standard. It's uh, when you produce like organic cotton items, you need that standard to making sure that you follow the whole value chain. You need a lot of certifications to making sure that you can provide the service that the customer uh, want, you to, want you to give. And since we have so many brands and we are a one-stop factory, there are so many different types of certification our customer required. So we must make sure that we implement and and invest in that. But this has to be where a lot of the European brands are obviously wanting these certain standards, but again, they're, they're coming to China and having all of these standards met. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, now it's the, the new transparency law has just started in, in, in Scandinavia and will now be implemented for all Europe. Okay. In July last year, the transparency standards started. That, and that means that you as a consumer, you can ask the brand, does your brand comply with working condition? Does your brand comply with environmental aspects? So then you as a brand you need to show this and and uh, we see now more and more uh, that they also re reveal who are the manufacturer, who is the exporter. So now it's more important than ever to have a factory who can really comply with your needs. Tommy, I think that's so important because oftentimes we hear about China that, for example, there could be issues in the supply chain, you know, whether it's human rights or whether it's where the cotton is being sourced. But I think this is what, like you said, that new transparency law yeah. that is being, again, followed here in China, followed by factory owners. And this is something that you as a consumer, but also brands, this is what they can do is simply do your research, right? You can simply go and see where is your factories, how are they producing it? As you've seen throughout the tour today, I mean, this is the high, very high standard, you know, textile factory. I mean, honestly, the, the cleanliness here is just unbelievable, yeah, right? I you. mean, the floors are, you know, completely clean. Everything is great. And it's, uh, it's been amazing, what an amazing yeah. tour. And you know, we, we build our business on trust also, you know? Yeah. Most of our clients, they are on the other side of the world. They can't be often here in, in China. So we must make sure that uh, what we say is true. We right. cut no corners and uh, me as a Norwegian, and you know, I am a trustworthy person, as a, yeah. as, a, as, a, as you know, the Norwegian people are. Yeah, that's right. So that's that's something it's a benefit for for our clients. That uh, we push forward and making sure that we 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 follow the regulations. Well, I see as a very good bridge between you know Europe and the Western world, and certainly China, and uh, you know, been build, building this bridge for 16 years. And, yeah. you know, with your company. Yeah, bridge building is a big part of our business. Actually, we want our customers to understand China, but we also making sure that our workers understand the customer we are working with. Yeah. So when we have customers from Sweden that they understand this is Sweden, this is a Swedish brand. Yeah. What's the DNA? What's what's the, what's important around your brand? It's, yeah. it's, it's important. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, well, I'm here on the floor with a factory worker. Let's speak some Chinese and see what he thinks here. 先生你好,我是王德忠,很高兴认识你了。Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. 你叫什么名字李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李大勇李
It's a hard question. I, I, I don't think it's possible, not in a big scale. Yeah. I can give you an example. For example, a jeans. Everyone has a jeans at home. Yeah. From the harvesting of the cotton until the jeans is finished, sold in the shop, it needs 3,700 liters of water. To produce one pair of jeans. One pair, pair of jeans. So one pair of jeans is 3,700 liters of water to make. Yeah, and that's when you take the Chinese garment industry, textile yeah. industry, it's around 6.4% of the total water consumption of China. So wow. you can imagine if, if if you start to move out like 50% or 30% back to Europe, then you do the same from India, Vietnam, Thailand, we will break the back. Yeah, yeah. Europe don't have a chance. Right. And also here in China, we have short distance to the raw materials. Right. And the raw materials is is essential for, for our production. So right. decoupling in big scale, no chance. Small scale, yes, but uh, right. I think the future is still in China for the next 10, 15 years, for sure. Wow, yeah. there you go. Yeah, that's a fascinating insight. And it's been such an amazing tour of Kalito and being able to get an insight into really the textile industry. Of course, myself, uh, having lived in China a long time, but never had a chance to see a factory. But yeah. but also, I mean, again, we don't understand that how how much effort it takes just to make the clothes that are on our backs right now. Yeah, like you said just a standard T-shirt. Eight different um, you know machines are needed to produce that. You look at the high quality machines that they're using. 300 workers here. You know brands from all over the world in Europe, you know Canada, North America. You know coming here to China. You know, wanting to manufacture and manufacture with the best, and yeah. and this is what, like we said in the beginning of this video, the industry has shifted. It's you know in China, it's now much more about quality, high quality standards here in China. Definitely, definitely, and it's, uh, it's a little bit funny because I'm Norwegian, so I I went to China and opened the factory because uh, I believe in the Chinese dream. So yeah. for me, it's uh, been a really really nice journey and uh, success. After learning firsthand how a textile factory works in China. Tommy brought me back to the showroom to see the finished products from his clients around the world. What's incredible about Kalito is their ability to manufacture a wide variety of products, everything from high-end ski jackets to industry-leading underwear. I even saw one of my favorite golf brands in the world, Jay Lindeberg from Sweden. You know, long-term viewers of the channel will know that I actually started my journey here in China as a golf professional. Okay. And I've been a huge fan of the Jay Lindeberg brand for almost 20 years. So it's pretty amazing to, you know, come here to China and meet with you and see this textile factory and see exactly where one of my favorite brands in the world is actually being manufactured. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, Jay Lindeberg is a, is a really amazing brand. It's uh, yeah. high quality, focusing on the environmental aspects and were good uh, working conditions so we are very proud to to be working with it but you know yeah. what yeah i did some research i know you that you are a fan of them so <laughs> so i made some calls and oh, wow. uh, i have a gift for you oh my gosh yeah, really yeah, oh yeah. fantastic oh my gosh look at this wow so this is uh, this is for you it's uh since you are a golf nerd, <laughs> if it's that's, uh, yeah. allowed to say that. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So next time you are on the golf course, you have uh, you have this beautiful bag with a lot of nice product inside. Fantastic. So, oh, thank today's you. Today's advertisement. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Well, shout out to Jay Lindeberg for the sponsorship. That's yeah. awesome. I really thank appreciate you. it. And yeah. Thank you so much, Tommy. Well, everyone, we had an amazing time with Kalito, touring the factories, really learning a lot more about this textile industry. And a huge thank you to Jay Lindeberg for the sponsorship and giving me these new clothings as a golfer and a sportsman. I absolutely love this brand. We're wearing the shirt and we're gonna finish today's video by celebrating with some of the key members of the Kalito team. Let's take you into the banquet hall and show you the Kalito team dinner tonight. Hello, Tata Hao. Hello, everyone. All right, everybody. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's YouTube video of our tour of Kalito. All right. right. Everybody on three, we're going to say Kalito. E, R, Sam, Kalito! Everybody, all the best from Wuxi. Thank you, guys. Well, we've traded. <laughs> right. Behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy wants to be a YouTuber and now he realizes, holy shit, it's really hard to do. Forget it! <laughs> so that's something here in, in Calito that we are focusing on to making sure that uh, uh, oh, uh, smoothly and safely. Correct. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. perfect, okay.